welcome everyone to um, today's Hearing Loss Association of America's OTC 101 Ask the Experts webinar series. I'm Melissa Cruz, and we're happy to have you join us today to learn about over-the-counter hearing aids for manufacturers. Today's webinar is the fourth in our series about OTC. And um, just so you know, all of our recordings are available from um, on the website, so you can go back and check out our other ones as well. Um, first, today's webinar is being captioned. To see the captions on the webinar, you'll just need to click on the CC icon and click, click Show Captions. Um, you can change the font size in the subtitle setting. Um, please use the chat button only for technical support issues. Our team will also be sharing links and information here. Um, you can use the Q&A icon to submit questions. We're going to try and get to as many questions as we can in today's discussion, um, but uh, we will be monitoring the uh, Q&A questions as well, Q&A channel as well, and we'll be answering some questions within the chat. And as I mentioned, all of our webinars will be recorded, made available. So if you want to go back and listen to the questions um, and the answers, you can do that as well. Um, also, if you join by computer, the presentation should be in side-by-side -side mode. The slides are on the left and the panelists are on the right in the gallery view. You can change the size of your side-by-side -side view by hovering between the two screens and moving the gray bar to adjust to your desired size. If you join by mobile device or phone, your view may be different and you may have to scroll between the views to get to your desired one. Um, just a quick reminder that the Hearing Loss Association doesn't endorse specific products or services. We try and get you as much information as, can, as we can to make it possible for you to make good decisions about your hearing health. And now I'm going to introduce Meredith Resnick. She is the HLLA's communication director. She is falling, fall, filling in, I'm sorry, for Barbara Kelly, our executive director, who had originally planned to moderate this, but is unfortunately unavailable today. All right, Meredith. Thank you so much, Melissa. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. The Hearing Loss Association of America makes hearing health a priority and empowers people with hearing loss and all of those at risk of hearing loss too, by providing reliable information, advocacy, and support. We represent all 50 million people in the United States with any degree of hearing loss. HLAA offers a community of support that all are welcome to join. If you are new to HLAA, we encourage you to please be part of our hearing health movement and to learn to live well with hearing loss. Our hearing is how we relate to the world around us and hearing should be protected in noisy environments, treated when there's a problem and checked regularly. Waiting to treat a hearing loss until it gets worse should not be an option. You've tuned in today, so we know that you are thinking about your hearing health or someone's you know, but many people don't do this. They don't realize that hearing is an important part of overall health and wellness. Remember, there is no such thing as a small hearing loss. If it gives you trouble or if your family tells you it gives you trouble, take action. In 2022, the FDA opened a new category of hearing aids called over-the-counter hearing aids. This is in addition to prescription hearing aids that you could, would get through an audiologist or a hearing instrument specialist. Over-the-counter is another pathway to care that gives some people choices. It's really important to remember that there's no one size fits all to hearing care and you could still see a hearing care professional and get an OTC product. One important fact about OTC hearing aids is that they're for adults only with mild to moderate hearing loss. Whatever route you choose, we do hope it takes you to taking that first step to treating hearing loss sooner and putting your hearing health right up there with other important health concerns. There's been tons of news coverage about OTC hearing aids, but we know that a lot of us are still confused. Our HLAA survey found that 68% of people who didn't purchase an OTC or OTC hearing aid said they just didn't have enough information. And that is why we're here today for the last in their series of four webinars on OTC. Um, these webinars are supported by a grant from the CTA Foundation 
to get information to people just like you, members of the general public who need their questions answered. Uh, as Melissa said, not all topics surrounding OTC will be covered today, but we uh, and we don't provide assessments or ratings of specific products here at HLAA, but we'll try to get to as many questions as you can. Um, we also have, in addition to today's webinar and all of our recordings of previous ones, we have online resources that have really been popular, an OTC tip sheet, a shopping guide, article links, and a survey. Please use these resources, share them with family and friends who also have questions, and please complete the survey because it really helps us gauge attitudes and understanding of hearing health. So today, we are very, very happy to have two panelists from companies that manufacture OTC hearing aids with us today to help answer your questions. We have um, people from Sonova and Jobber Hearing. So these panelists are gonna help answer your questions. Thank you for being here. First, I'm gonna introduce Jessica Dancis. She's a senior marketing manager with Sonova. She's an experienced clinical audiologist with, with more than 16 years at Sonova. Welcome, Jessica. Tell us a little bit about your experience. Yeah, thank you. And thank you to everybody for joining today. We are so happy to, to be here. Um, and so a little bit about me. Yes, like she said, I've seen patients for over 10 years and I've been with Sonova now. Um, you know, probably have Sennheiser hearing for years as well. And I got into OTC really because of my father-in-law who had been to a, an audiologist, got a hearing test, was being yelled at all the time because he wasn't, couldn't hear. And nothing I could say to him was going to get him back into that clinic to, to get a prescription hearing aid. And so when OTC became available, I literally brought it to him over the holidays and said, here, you're getting this, tried mm -hmm. it on. And he was so cute. He just loved it. And he's like, wow, really? I'm doing my phone and you can hear me through the hearing aids. And he has never wanted to take them off since. So it was very personally important to me to be able to, to get him into something, knowing that I would never get him into a prescription. And it's just really um, wonderful. It warms my heart that I can bring that to other people as well. That's a great story. Love to hear those, those personal anecdotes. Okay, next is Katie Keese. Um, she's an audiologist and manager at, jo at the Jobber Hearing Team of Teleaudiology Providers. That's a mouthful. She's worked in diagnostic testing, education, training, oral rehabilitation, and hearing loss prevention. So welcome, Katie. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, very excited to be here. So thank you for having us. Um, so yes, I have been an audiologist for quite some time now, but really within the last five years, I was working in telehealth. Um, I started working in the telehealth space back in 2019 with a startup company called Lively at the time. And in 2021, Lively was acquired by GN Resound, a world leading manufacturer of hearing aids and audio parts. And at that time we rebranded to Jabra Enhance, as you know us today. Um, so since the launch of OTC hearing aids nearly a couple years ago now, I know there's been a lot of confusion from the consumer end, as well as the professionals within the hearing industry. Um, so I'm really excited to get to be here today to answer any questions and hopefully shed a light on OTC hearing aids and what are they, who are they for, um, and really just hope that you can leave here with a better understanding of OTC devices um, and yeah, how they're appropriate. Excellent. Well, I'm excited to have you two experts here with us for sure. Um, first, I want to start with a few questions that were submitted ahead of time. So sometimes some people that registered um, went ahead and, and typed in a few questions that they had. And um, we'll go through a few of those first that we picked out. Um, some of them came up quite often. So the first one is, who is a good candidate for OTC hearing aids? And what should they be looking for in an OTC product? Yeah, um, I guess I'll go first if you don't, <laughs> if you don't mind. Go, go um, ahead and jump right in. We'll be sure. we'll both for sure. Uh, there we go. Um, so of course the FDA says that um, OTC is for people with perceived mild to moderate hearing loss uh, for, as you had mentioned earlier, for adults. So, you know, perceived, it means that you are noticing that you're having some trouble, right? Um, you're hearing, you're having trouble hearing in background noise, 
you are um, maybe hearing people who are further away, you're having to ask people to repeat more, maybe turning up the TV a little bit, um, all of those types of things. And oftentimes your family is just starting to, to nudge you on it, or maybe you're just feeling a little tired at the end of the day because you're having to, to work harder. So um, you know, those are all great signs of being a candidate for it. Um, and, and really what we're finding also, as you mentioned, like a lot of people are getting hearing tests, so they know that they actually have a hearing loss. And right now it's about seven years is that gap between recognizing and getting your first test and getting a hearing aid. So really the goal is for, and, um, and what we are seeing is that people are much more likely to bridge that gap, to get them sooner, get it earlier in their journey and start enjoying hearing better, um, with, by getting the OTC hearing aids. So you just, uh, one thing that, that you just mentioned, two different things, you were talking about you, a hearing loss, um, and we're talking about people with mild to moderate hearing loss. Like we'll just reiterate that OTC is not for people that have a more severe or profound hearing loss. Now that can be diff difficult to tell if you're just perceiving it yourself. But you mentioned something too. So you could have a self-perceived hearing loss, like I'm probably having trouble hearing in certain settings or people, I'm saying what a lot or my family's telling me that I'm turning the TV up loud, or I don't hear a lot of things. But you could also be somebody who got a hearing test and knows that you have a mild to moderate hearing loss. So um, that's kind of where it doesn't have to be an either or. You could be somebody who did see an audiologist or a hearing instrument specialist, got a test, and then still decides to get an OTC. So Katie, do you wanna weigh in on, on what makes a good candidate for an OTC? Yeah. So just to kind of piggyback off of that a little bit, you know, as, as you said, it's, it's not, um, it's either, or, so if you have that perceived loss, or if you have a diagnostic a diagnosed loss, um, either can be fine as long as it's not on that more, um, severe to profound where maybe you need an ear mold, um, and a lot more power and an OTC device isn't really appropriate, but really kind of what should be, you be looking for in an OTC product? I think there's a lot of different things you can think about. Um, and really thinking about what values are important to you. So for example, there are different form factors. There are behind the ear styles. There's an earbud more in the ear styles. Is that important to you? Um, a trial period, that's not something that's a requirement, but I would strongly suggest that you look at an OTC device that does allow a return period. Um, I'd also recommend you think about what sort of support you're looking for. So are you looking for access to customer service support? Do you want support from a licensed professional? Um, lots of different OTC devices come with a variety of support. So what sort of support options are important to you? Um, and then again, really just back to that, what, what is your hearing loss? Um, you know, even if you do have a diagnosed loss that is a lot more um, severe than a mild to moderate loss, the nice thing about OTC is there's nothing stopping you from trying, um, whether it's, you know, finances or something like that, that's preventing you from getting a prescriptive device, but really it's just going to be what is working for you. Um, so we like to, at Jobber Enhance, for example, we, we combine a lot of it. Um, we have the customer service support as well as the licensed professional audiological care um, where we can customize and tailor OTC devices to someone's loss specifically. Um, so yeah, there, there's just a lot of different things to think about. And really, I would recommend what is most important to you um, when thinking about that. Yeah, interesting that not all OTC devices, I mean, they really run the gamut in terms of price and in terms of features, it seems like, and also in terms of support um, and return policy. You mentioned that. We actually um, lobbied for that with at uh, HLAA to get that include, included in the requirements. It wasn't included in the FDA requirements, but if there is a return policy, it needs to be stated on the product. So we recommend that you, just like you said, Katie, you do not buy an over-the-counter hearing aid without a return policy and a good long one so that you can try it in different settings because it may not be an instantaneous thing. You know, you might not be able to tell right away if it's going to help you. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent information. Um, another question, uh, how is the OTC market going so far from your standpoint of your companies and what can you tell us about who's buying them and at what rates, return rates, anything you can tell us. And this is, we got this um, a couple of times from registrants and we get this from the media all the time. And there's really not a lot of information out there yet. So 
what can you tell us? Yeah, um, I, I can go ahead and jump sure. in here. Um, so one thing that makes my viewpoint a little bit different is I mentioned that when I first started at the company I'm currently in, we were called Lively and we did prescriptive hearing aids. And then when regulations changed, we changed our model to OTC devices. And it was really interesting to see how many people didn't realize that we weren't already OTC devices when we were prescriptive devices. Um, we have a receiver in the ear or a receiver in the canal style. And so with it being a GN resound device, a lot of people just kind of there, there's a lot of confusion on what's prescriptive and what's OTC. So from our viewpoint, our market didn't really change much as far as consumers who are coming to us purchasing because they either already thought we were OTC or they still think we're prescriptive. So we definitely let them know we're OTC. Um, but as far as, you know, kind of like what Jessica was saying a little bit, there's that like seven year gap between people finding out they have hearing loss and doing something about it. I don't have the data to support it, but just from my personal experience over the past several years, I feel like people are coming to this model a lot sooner. Um, I'd like to think we're getting to people a lot quicker because it's not as scary, um, I think. Yeah. And it's something, again, we offer a 100 day trial period. And so with that, people go, okay, I've got a safety blanket where I can, I can try this out. And if it's not for me, that's okay. Um, and also I come from a group of, we have a team of about almost 40 audiologists and hearing aid dispensers, and we'll be the first to tell you if OTC is appropriate or not. Um, we have a kind of one size fits most model and then more of a customized one where we can make programming adjustments and customize it and tailor it to your hearing loss, whether that's through us um, on the license side, through the software, or we have an app that allows you to make customization as well. So as far as kind of who's coming to us, um, it's people who have had prescriptive devices before and are finding OTC devices very successful. Um, it's people who come to us because they have prescriptive devices and they want a backup option. Oh. Um, and we've got those who it's their first time trying anything. So it's really a mix. Um, and I think, again, we kind of make it a little less scary as opposed to having to go in and um, spend thousands and thousands of dollars on something if you're not totally sure it's right for you. Um, and we found a lot of success in our model specifically, even when we were prescriptive to changing to OTC. Um, as far as return rates, I don't have return rates specifically, but again, I can say that a return policy is super, super critical, I think, when looking at this. So again, they can range from zero days to 45 days to up to 100 days, um, and I think it's really important that you look into that. Jessica. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is interesting because um, we are seeing a range of different types of people who are buying the the Sennheiser products and we have our all day clear and our all day clear slim. So we have two different Rick style um, and, um, you know, we're seeing people who are both, you know, a lot of new users, certainly people who've never gotten them before. Some of them who are being bought like I did for my father-in-law by somebody else. And in fact, we'll have like the son call up and say, Hey, I'm doing this for my mom. She's sitting right here. And you know, we're, we're working, we're doing this together type of uh -huh. thing, but there's a lot of new users. Um, you know, we are Sennheiser. So, um, we are powered by Sonova Technologies. Sonova is the biggest hearing aid manufacturer in the world, but also we are very lucky to be part of Sennheiser, which is um, well known for our premium audio experiences. So we also have people who are coming to us because of the Sennheiser brand and, um, and the appeal for that. Um, and, you know, we're seeing, I mean, the overall market is, it's about 2%. That's of all for all OTC. That's mm -hmm. what we're seeing right now, 2% and growing. That's two overall hearing aid market. market. Yeah. 2% yeah, is about, it's about 2%. Yep. Yeah, wow. At the moment. Um, and, you know, we're super excited. We're thrilled by the success that we've had from patients saying how happy they are with the products, with the experience. Um, you know, ours are self-fitting. There are different types of products out there. So they are the self-fitting ones that go through the FDA that have a higher FDA. Um, and those are those. Um, I mean, they, they're, they tend to have meet higher standards. They do meet higher mm -hmm. standards. And so that's something that you, you know, people are looking at, obviously with OTC, there is a huge range of quality and different types of products sort of as, uh, uh, Katie was, was talking a little bit before. Um, so Jessica, about, let me interject. Yeah. Right. 
Yes. I think that's a really important point that people should look for not only, um, and, and actually we, we've run into this before with the, um, there was some kind of fly by night products um, that mm -hmm. were popping up as OTC, make sure that it is a genuine OTC hearing aid. And it should also say self fitting on it. Is that correct? I mean, certainly you're going to get a higher, they've gone, those have gone through a more rigorous FDA um, process The okay. before, if they say self-fitting. So, um, and usually they have more features that yeah. way because now they have, they actually make sure that they have full self-fitting software in, in there as well. So, yeah. Somebody I, did I say, and I'm looking at the Q&A here, it said um, about what should consumers be cautious about when purchasing an OTC? And I think we're covering that right here. And she said, should I buy an OTC from a Facebook ad? So yeah. we don't know who's advertising on Facebook, but we, we do know that there, um, another thing that we have recommended at HLAA is particularly for now that you stick with um, recognized brands because there's a lot out there. Um, there was there was a story, and I know we have the link on our website at one point um, from Consumer Reports that people were all kinds of things were coming up in a search for OTC hearing aids on Amazon and other other places that weren't really OTC hearing aids. They were really hearables, which is um, a different kind of, of device that's not really a hearing aid uh, at all, and um, it doesn't meet those same strict safety requirements that the FDA has spelled out for over-the-counter hearing aids. So that's a couple of things right there that you need to look out for. Um, yeah. That's a yeah. great point. And I know we have on our website, we have a whole suite, we have both a hearing screener so that you can check um, to see with your within that perceived mild to moderate loss. We also have a full suite of information and educational support and videos on use and care of the hearing aids to make sure that you're fully supported for that. And you do want to look for things like that. Of course, we also have uh, a return um, period, as Katie was saying, that's very important to be able to do that. You know, I was at a, um, a convention um, not too long ago where a bunch of different OTC manufacturers were, were talking and the average return rate from um, those that were talking was somewhere between 40 to 50%, which is pretty, mm. pretty shocking. Um, I know that for us, for Sennheiser, that we have um, due to the quality of the products and when you've got that you know, someone is chopping on and using our informed information that our return rate is only about 20%, which is pretty much the average for um, a prescription hearing aid. So that you know that you're going to get something that um, is really quality and that you're going to, that you're going to enjoy. Interesting. Um, one question that came up, and I think what you talked about a little bit um, with some of the signs and symptoms to know that you have mild to moderate hearing loss. Is there something that you can use in terms of decibel loss to, to quantify the range of mild to moderate that would be appropriate for an OTC? Okay, do you want to take this one? I'll take it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, for anyone who's had an audiogram, um, you know, it specifically does have mild to moderate loss on there. Now, that could be different, whether it's low frequency or high frequency, different sorts of um, patterns of hearing loss. So again, it's kind of, it's, it's difficult when you're talking about perceived loss per se, cause you could have diagnosed loss and then you could have perceived loss. Um, but as far as thresholds go, um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head exact, again, I feel like it can kind of vary, but I would say once you reach to that, uh, severe to profound range, like, so be, we're talking beyond 65 plus, that's when really you might be more better suited appropriately for something else, especially in those lower frequencies where you're going to need a lot more volume, um, or perhaps an ear mold to really get the power and appropriate fitting that you need. Okay. That would kind of be my, my answer. That makes sense. And it is important to note here that although we do quantify hearing loss with numbers, it's pretty confusing for the lay people out there. And it is um, very individual. No, no two hearing losses are the same. Is that about the size? Definitely. No two hearing mm -hmm. losses are the same, even if they're the same on paper. And you could go get a diagnostic hearing test and it show no loss, but that doesn't mean you're not still having difficulty, uh -huh. whether it's in background noise or processing. And that's where even if you have, you know, hidden hearing loss is what it's called a lot. Um, OTC devices might be appropriate for you with their directional microphones and the ability to increase that signal to noise ratio. So to put 
thresholds around it. Again, I know there's perceived loss and there's diagnosed loss, but again, even at the end of the day, if your hearing loss is um, not even an actual hearing loss per se, based off thresholds, doesn't mean you might not be a good candidate. Yeah. And I think that is one thing that's cool about OTC devices is it opens up the door for someone to go, well, you know, I, I went to X, Y, and Z and they said, I'm not really a candidate, but I'm really having difficulty. They can also kind of take it in their own hands a little bit and try something and see if it's appropriate for them or not. And again, seek that um, if you'd like, you know, you can speak to an audiologist or a licensed hearing care professional about it as well. Um, so you can kind of get the best of both worlds, I think. That really makes a lot of sense. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, another question that came up a few times that hopefully you guys can address here is um, OTC hearing aids connecting with assistive listening systems in public like telecoils and Bluetooth um, and also connecting with apps on cell phones. Can Jessica, do you want to start us off with that? Sure, absolutely. I mean, there's obviously there's a variety of different types of OTC hearing aids that um, and with different features and different options. Um, I will say that, you know, with um, a lot of hearing aids these days do have some Bluetooth in them where they can connect. Um, a lot of the major manufacturers tend to really be mostly iPhone. So they're limited to the iPhone and the microphone is, um, if you're trying to talk on the phone, is on the on the actual phone itself. So you're walking around like this uh, to have a conversation because you can hear in the hearing aid, but the microphone is still on the phone. So um, our Sennheiser hearing aids are made for all uh, Bluetooth connectivity. So that means that not only can you, will you have an app for your Apple and your Android, but it's all Bluetooth. So you can be talking on Bluetooth and have an Apple phone, have an Android, have a basic phone. You might even be able to have like a jitterbug and still be able to stream your phone. The microphones are actually on the hearing aid itself, which means you're hands-free. So you don't need to, you could be 20 feet from your phone <laughs> and still be talking on the phone and enjoying that conversation. That was what I was talking about with my father-in-law. He's like, oh my gosh, you can hear me and I'm talking. <laughs> it is right there. Um, so um, you know, Bluetooth is, is common, but there are a lot of limitations for some of the manufacturers. So you do want to look at that. If you have an Android, then a lot of those might not, uh, a lot of those hearing aids might not be right for you. Uh, but the Sennheiser will definitely be able to take care of that. Uh, we also have our um, TV connector, which is a TV streamer that you can add for additional enjoyment. And it can plug into a TV or um, a computer or anything else. So again, we have Bluetooth that can stream from the, the phone or TV, but um, but some uh, TVs, particularly older TVs, may not even have that kind of connection or you simply want that higher fidelity um, sound. And so we have the, the TV connector that you can do as well and you can plug that into different things. Uh, and ours will also, those same TV connector will work with a Phonak and Unitron hearing aid. So if you've got in the house, you've got someone with an OTC and someone with a Phonak or a Unitron, they could all be streaming off of the same TV connector, which is really nice. Yeah, and to piggyback off of that, um, again, like Jessica was saying, devices have lots of different options. I can speak to what Jabra has. We also are able to connect Bluetooth for both iPhone and Android and have hands-free calling so that the audio goes both ways, like she was talking about. Um, our devices don't have a telecoil in them. However, we have a full range of accessories like a TV streamer. We do have a multi-mic and our multi-mic has a telecoil built into that. So if you bought the multi-mic accessory and connected it to your devices, you could have access to a loop system. Um, our most recent device, it's called the Jabra Enhanced Select 500. Um, it actually has AuraCast built into it as well. Now, AuraCast and low energy Bluetooth is something that's new and not everyone has adapted it yet. So I know there are only a select few phones. Actually, Android, for once, um, is kind of at the, the lead of AuraCast as far as phones go. Um, but we kind of refer to that as just like future proofing your uh -huh. Uh -huh. because eventually we're hoping that more um, venues and uh, airports and other devices will incorporate that aura cast as well. So it's in there. Again, not everyone has access to it right now just because of the limitation, um, but there are a variety of different ways that you can connect to things. 
Interesting. That answers, we we get that question a lot. Are there any that connect to Telecoil and Orcast? And you're basically saying that, yeah, there, there are. So that's good to know. Um, what about price points? That's a question we get a lot. And I know it really runs the gamut. Um, we tell people probably stay away from the ones that are at the very, very, very bottom <laughs> of the, the um, spectrum there. Uh, and again, stay with major brands. Um, but how, speaking from your standpoint, how do the prices compare um, to prescription hearing aids? What what kind of price ranges are we talking about here? Um, you know, we know that that hearing aids are often not covered by insurance, unfortunately not covered by Medicare. OTC would certainly not be covered by insurance in most cases, um, as far as we know, unfortunately. But what kind of price points are we talking about? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's interesting because actually some insurances do. I know some um, our all day clears are um, on UHCHs, United Healthcare Hearing um, does offer that. So if you have that, that it is covered there. That is an OTC uh, product that's covered. Ours is. Yes. Well, okay. yes. I mean, OTC are hearing aids. So, that, so some insurances and as well as if um, let's say um, you, um, anything where it's an OTC hearing aid, some of them spe specify, okay, you can only get this list of products. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's what I was saying, like UHC, that's covered other insurances. It's just submit for your hearing aid came, you know, your, your hearing aid, whatever that happens to be. These now are hearing aid, they are hearing aid. So you can submit that. So it kind of depends mm -hmm. on the type of insurance you have, but very often you may be able, you know, you should at least check with your insurance first. That's always the, right. <laughs> that's always right. the recommendation is just check with your insurance and, and right. they'll be able to tell you um, if you have coverage or not. And as you said, there is a huge range in prices. Uh, I mean, I've certainly ever seen everything from $50 to a couple thousand dollars in terms of OTC hearing aids. And um, I mean, our Sennheiser ones are just under um, they're nine ninety five, so they're you know just a little bit under a thousand. And it, and you you get what you pay for, right? If you're you're getting something that's on the low end, um, that's what you're going to get. And for us, we really you know Sennheiser is known for our quality and our performance, and and we deliver on that. And that's for the set. Most of them, some OTCs, probably maybe individual, um, but. You know, for um for ours, everything comes in the box and it's um it's both of them. So you're getting the two for the set. Um, you know, and and I am a firm believer in prescription hearing aids and as an audiologist and part of Sonova. When you think about prescription hearing aids, what a lot of people don't talk about is that all of those services tend to be bundled into the price of the hearing aid. So right. when they tell you it's six thousand dollars, it doesn't mean the device was six thousand dollars, but the device plus all of the care that you're purchasing up front is in total included $6,000. So, um, so it, you know, it's just, it's sort of actually comparing apples to oranges in a way because OTC, um, and not that you can't get professional services for some of the OTCs, many, most of them, and this is something you also want to look for, is, is there the ability to program them? Is there ability for um, additional support? We do with Sennheiser, uh, an audiologist can hook them up. You can go into, and in fact, we encourage if you need to, you go into a provider um, on our site. We have our find a provider locator. You can go to one of those and they'll be able to hook them up, adjust them, take care of them for you. And you can just buy the in-clinic care package for them to do that. So there's a lot of options for help with those. Um, but the nice thing with OTC is that you don't have to buy all those extra services if you don't want their um, usually a la carte. Very interesting. I didn't realize that it worked that way, but it seems like it's kind of like a, a hybrid kind of situation where you can still work with a professional. So that's really interesting. Yeah, most of them aren't. Most of them you get what you get. And then the provider, maybe mm -hmm. they can tell you if, if it's working, they might be able to hook it up to a machine that says, okay, it's matching your target or it's not matching your target. Mm -hmm. And then there's nothing more they can do. They're like, yeah, you don't like it. I'm sorry. I can't make any changes on it. So that we wanted to avoid those types of challenges and, and, you know, give providers extra tools to help, um, help people. Yeah. Hey, yeah. just a few things to add. There are so many great bullet points there. Um, I'll start with the insurance bit. So like Jessica was saying, it's very based on insurance. Um, what your policy is, uh, we are actually also covered under UHCH. So depending on what your plan is, we have partnered with UHCH. So, um, 
slowly but surely, I think, you know, insurances are getting on board because like Jessica was saying, they are actually hearing aids. They're not uh, personal sound amplifiers or anything like that. They, they are actually regulated hearing devices. So um, when you're looking at your insurance, check and see if they do need a diagnosis code as well, because even though mm. OTC hearing aids might be for perceived loss. Um, some insurances in order to reimburse, they will still require an audiogram with a official diagnosis code. So again, follow up with your insurance and see if that's huh. something that would cover. Um, but yeah, there are, there are OTC devices that are covered under some insurances currently. So it is exciting to see that because as we know, historically insurance is just usually kind of not covered hearing aids. Um, and then let's see. That was the insurance one. There was some, another thing that we were just generally talking about price. I guess that's okay. Where yes, we price. That's how you got on price so, points compared to prescription. Absolutely, hearing. yeah. So they can absolutely vary, uh, just like we were saying. So we offer devices. There are three different levels for the receiver and the canal devices. They range from nine ninety five all the way up to one thousand nine hundred ninety five for the more advanced ones. Um, and then there's options that are a difference in price based off. Is it a one size fits most, we call it like a standard default settings that's not customized to your loss. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can add on, do you want customization or not? So kind of like what Jessica was saying, if it's something that has the ability to do self fit, whether you customize it in the app with the devices or you have a professional customize it, um, that's something I think is gonna be really important if your hearing loss especially is not kind of that standard high frequency sloping loss. Um, so. As far as prices go, I know they can range. Like it's already been said, you can definitely get what you pay for. If it's anything below about $500, I'd really want to make sure that it's not a personal sound amplifier and that it mm -hmm. is actually an OTC hearing aid um, because I know marketing sometimes can be confusing for the consumer out there. Yes, we've come across a number of articles on that um, as well where if it says, if it's a personal sound application device, what Katie just said, or a PSAP, it might be marketed to, um, you know, hear prey in the woods to help with hunting or some other very specific um, uh, instances, but it's not the same thing as, a, as something that is labeled an OTC self-fitting hearing aid that has been regulated or falls under the category of that regulation by the FDA. So that's really important distinction. Yes. Yeah. So if you're seeing something that's under $500, you're saying it could be one of those PSAPs or something. I would just double check because the difference really between a PSAP and an actual hearing aid is a PSAP will just kind of turn the volume up everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I think the FDA literally refers to them as, you know, devices for bird watching, yeah. um, that sort of thing. Whereas the hearing aid is going to help you where you need help. So it's going to be frequency specific and it's going to come with a whole lot of features that really help process sound so that you can hear it clearly and where you need help and rather not just make everything louder for you. That is such a good way to explain it. You guys are, are hitting the nail on the head here. I love it. Um, another question that we got a couple of times is, um, can over-the-counter hearing aids work for tinnitus? Mm. That is a little bit of a loaded question because <laughs> it can be so different person by person. Okay. But we know that so many people with tinnitus, a lot of times that can come from having hearing loss. Mm. So I know personally, um, with a lot of the customers that we've seen, they absolutely can get relief from tinnitus by treating that hearing loss, even if it is through an OTC device. Now, mm -hmm. can we make a guarantee and claim it's going to fix everyone's tinnitus? Absolutely not, because there's so many factors into what can be causing tinnitus, because we know that tinnitus is not a standalone Thing, it is a symptom of something else. And for those where it's a symptom of hearing loss, there's a very high chance that by treating the hearing loss, you can notice a reduction in the ringing in the ears. So again, different person to person, um, but there, we, we've seen a lot of success through our customer base that have gotten relief from tinnitus. Um, at the beginning of all of our appointments with our customers, we gather what are called COSI goals. It's the client-oriented scale of improvement. And that's how we document and gather our success and outcomes on if someone's doing well. And a lot of people come to us and tinnitus is one of their mm -hmm. primary concerns. Um, and we've seen a lot of success with OTC devices and treating the hearing loss, which then in return helps reduce the ringing in the ears. So 
I can't say it would be the case for every single person, but we have seen it for a lot of people. And typically, you know, treating tinnitus is, is masking tinnitus, right? Like we, mm -hmm. we aren't going into the ear and fixing anything, but, but instead of focusing on the sound that's inside of your ear, having that outside sound, your brain then focuses on that. And that is where people tend to find the most tinnitus relief because now they have something else to focus on. And so having, you know, hearing aids, OTC hearing aids is a great way of, of shifting that focus. Um, so yes, absolutely. You know, the Sennheiser will can help um, mask that sound. And so you have, a, you know, a, a better likelihood to, to not focus on it and find relief. Um, you can also, there are often apps that you can stream that have maskers, either just regular sound, you know, the same type of sound generators that you would think of or other types of things, but also just specific masking you know, apps that are designed to help with tinnitus. And so you can, with ours, you can stream those because you have the access, the Bluetooth access to the phone. So there's extra resources through there um, that can help you with that. Okay. Um, one question has come through that they're talking about um, basically a little skepticism that if a person has not had an audiogram and you walk in, you know, you maybe think you have a problem, you haven't had an audiogram, you walk in to purchase an OTC product and there's no, it's not a place with an audiologist there. How do you succeed? How do you know what to choose? And how could this person possibly get help from some product on the shelf at Best Buy or Amazon? Sure. You know, I mean, obviously, again, there are a lot of products out there and there are a lot of claims I, going. Um, some of it is going back to what Katie said and what we were talking about before as well. Like, you know, looking for self-fitting, looking for um, thinking about the kinds of things that you you need. Um, I mean, earbuds are great. I love earbuds, but I would never want to wear them for more than a couple hours at a time. So if you're getting a true earbud style OTC and you want to wear that all day, that's probably not going to be comfortable for you. That's why we, ours are Ricks and why we can call them on all day and their names are called all day clear. Um, I would also say, you know, like if you really want a provider, go for it, please. We encourage you to see audiologists and get a hearing test. And, um, and again, I was talking about on our app where we have our, the hearing screener, you know, check out your hearing. It's good for your hearing health as well as, <laughs> you know, just you're making sure your overall health as well as for getting a hearing aid. So there, we are definitely not discouraging um, and we are encouraging you to do that. But if you are looking at um, the products on the shelf, then, then going with a, a brand that's well known and, and that you trust, I would also recommend that you are looking at ones from um, that have a um, major manu hearing aid manufacturers technology in them. Because we as hearing aid manufacturers, I mean, the way that Sonova is um, processing in our all day clear, we looked at all the millions of ears that we fit. And then based on that, we came up with how to um, do a quick self-fitting. So ours isn't even tones, it's speech, because that's what you're normally listening to. It takes under five minutes and you're actually listening to that speech and picking, is it loud enough? and what level is clear enough for you. So we've taken all of those decades of knowledge mm -hmm. um, to, to create our OTC. There are a lot of companies that may be good in, um, in audio sound or good in Bluetooth or whatever, but they doesn't necessarily mean that they're great in hearing the types of um, things that, that make a good hearing aid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this is such a valid question. And I think it kind of goes back to what I mentioned at the very beginning, thinking about what your values are when you're looking for an OTC device. Is it something that you don't want any assistance with? There are plenty out there, mm -hmm. but it's it's totally fine if you want assistance, whether it's through a customer service, um, whether it's through a licensed professional, because there are options that come with whatever sort of support you're looking for, whether it's no support or some support. Um, and Jabra Enhance, we actually are on the shelves at Best Buy and we are on Amazon. So it's really looking at all the devices out there on the shelves and on Amazon. What do they come with and what is it that aligns with what you want? So again, if you, if you want that professional support, there are ones out there that do mm -hmm. that. Um, if you don't want the professional support, there are options that don't have that. Um, but I think really looking at the manufacturer. So although we're called Jobber Enhance, we are owned by GN Resound. 
you know, we've obviously got Sennheiser and Sonova. Um, so I think looking at a reputable brand and that history of, you know, for like um, the GN family, for example, we've got Resound and then we've got Jabra, which have both audio and hearing aids combined. So you've got 150 years in the manufacturing world. So they have a lot of millions that they put into research and data every year. So whether it's a self-fit device or whether it's a kind of one size fits most that comes with different sort of hearing profiles, knowing does your hearing loss kind of align with what a one size fits most looks like? Is that gonna be appropriate? Or do you need something that's more customized, whether it's through a self fit or a um, licensed professional customizing it for you? Those are the things that I would encourage you to look at um, because you're right, how can you know if it's working for you? Um, if if you don't know what the inner workings are and you have no one to talk to, so. Yeah, I would say, go back to what, what is it that you want? Um, and there's going to be an option out there for you that can fit that. What about updating software on these products? Um, somebody did write in that they actually had purchased a Jabra enhanced OTC and they're very satisfied. They said the tests work great. The products work great. What happens in the future? Will we be able to update the software yeah, so we do provide firmware updates as they come. Um, we have the ability of sending adjustments remotely. So if that's something that becomes available, I know firmware adjustments don't come all that often, um, but when they do, you absolutely have the ability to receive those. Okay. And what about your products, Jessica? Yeah, um, so I mean, certainly we have had, uh, or we can have adjust um, updates for the, the app. You can also get um, adjustments on the hearing aids as well. Um, so it kind of just depends on, you know, kind of where, what you're looking for, but but there are, if there's say there's an app update, we will absolutely send that out um, um, for you. Okay, here's an interesting question. Can a hard of hearing person who has worn prescription hearing aids for 10 years change to OTCs? What do you yeah. think? I mean, I know that's not, uh, you can't answer. I was going to say, I can't say that off. for every yeah. single person. Um, yeah. But one thing that I wanted to kind of point out was, you know, when we were lively before we changed um, to OTC, we were selling prescriptive devices and we still have a lot of repeat customers who come back year after year and are now purchasing an OTC device um, and doing really, really well with that because there are FDA regulations for what an OTC device falls under as far as um, output and things like that. But as far as features go, um, our devices have so many features, just like a prescriptive device. The difference is, um, you know, predominantly the output and what we can provide as far as gain and output. Um, so I would say we have people who are on a daily basis, changing from prescriptive to OTC, not necessarily because they're choosing an OTC, but maybe it's because they don't realize that there is a difference, um, but doing really, really well with that. That being said, there are people who it's not appropriate for. Um, and if they have more of those severe losses, then really they need to stick with a prescriptive device that can give them the appropriate gain. Um, and yeah, at, at the end of the day, everyone's hearing loss is different. So um, like I said, it's really important to look for that trial period, because if you want to try and you go, you know, I've had prescriptive devices for 10 years, I want to try out an OTC device and you go, this isn't working for me. That's okay. You can return it and go back to what you're comfortable with. Um, and that's where that return period is really, really important. But firsthand, I can say we've had lots of customers over the past several years successfully go from prescriptive to OTC. And we've even had a handful of analog users who have switched from analog hearing aids to digital OTC hearing aids and been successful. Wow. Yeah. There was, um, uh, on the balancing act was a TV show had, um, talked to, and he's actually quite a fairly young. He was a, um, an audio engineer and he had worn hearing. I think he's even had a hearing loss when he was young. Um, and he had worn prescription hearing aids for years and then saw, because he is an audio engineer and loves Sennheiser for everything else, for his audio equipment. So he switched over to, um, to the Sennheiser, to the all day clears. And he was talking about how much he loved them, um, and how they, they made a big difference. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I definitely agree with what Katie was saying, right. You know, it's sort of, what are you looking for? What kind of features do you want? Do you want that? Um, you know, um, 
Do you want the provider to be sort of hand holding you? Do you want to just you know more do it on your own? Um, and and kind of look at it at look at it from there. We're not trying to take people out of prescription hearing aids into OTC, but but certainly they are a great option and a, a great solution. You know that brings me to another point. Um, when you you're talking about taking people out of prescriptions into OTC, I think. Um, there was a lot of fear around OTC before they came before the market opened, particularly among audiologists and um, other professionals who really feared that um, you know it was going to take business away from the prescription hearing aid market. Um, and talk a little bit about what you heard then and then what you're hearing now, because it certainly feels like everybody's kind of on board now. And I think a lot of the bad things that people thought were going to happen didn't come to pass. Are you seeing that? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, I, I mean, and I think it's been a progression. I think what you, if you talk to some a provider, you know, I was 10 years ago, it would be, you know, kind of the sky is falling. <laughs> this is going to be the worst, yeah. you know, it really was, there was a lot of fear around it. Um, but, and I think over time, Five years ago, it was like maybe half that or, you know, and, and I think at this point, what providers are seeing, you know, there was a big um, talk when I talked about hearing OTC hearing aids and legislation came about, there was a lot of press. There's a lot. And, and one of the biggest problems for hearing loss is people thinking about it and realizing, you know what, I should do something about this. So, I mean, I've heard from a lot of providers that they are busier than ever. And I think it is that is because they are, there's a lot of more people talking about hearing aids. And there are people who are thinking about OTC and going into a provider first. Um, and, and we've also seen people who've seen the products on the website, seen our find a provider locator and said, oh, you know what? They're down the block. Let me just go see, pop in and, uh -huh. and talk to them and, and get the, you know, see what they have to say. So um, and we also, we do sell um, at Best Buy and on Amazon, and we've seen people who bought at Best Buy and then called and said, hey, you know, I have a question or something. And then we have, we, uh, our customer service goes to that find a provider. If it's not something we can help them with, we mm -hmm. go to our provider provider and we will send them to someone for the expert help. So um, we're really seeing that there's a better connection and we are, our, you know, we're funneling when people need to, to, to get the help that they need. So we're making sure. Um, and I just think as an, in, in general, because you've got the OTCs, more people are wearing hearing aids, um, or they're thinking about it and, and starting to get hearing aids. Yeah. Yeah. I think it definitely is. It's the halo effect, right? You know, people yeah. are hearing about this OTC thing. So whether they want something or just have questions about it, it gets people talking. Um, and my thought is there are literally millions of people in the U S that have hearing loss and not every single person wears a hearing aid, but we know the importance of treating hearing loss and how it just has an impact to your overall well being. So I think if it gets people talking and interested, it's not so much taking away from prescription because prescription is always going to be there. Um, and there's always going to be a need for that but it can help fill the gap of someone who's maybe not quite ready for a prescriptive device, but they're curious about it. Um, someone who might not be able to make the financial step that a prescriptive device might come with, but they can maybe do an OTC device. Um, and it's gonna be a space that is filled with companies one way or the other. And so my thought is how great we have two audiologists here from two different brands yeah. talking about that. And we have a list of ethics, we have, um, you know, we're coming, we're coming at it from a care viewpoint of, okay, what's the best that we can do for those that have hearing loss? How can we help? How can we help bridge that gap? Do it in an ethically way. Um, whereas I don't know, maybe not every company is as ethical as, you know, our companies here, mm -hmm. but I'd much rather be on the side where you go, I'm a licensed professional who's going to help fill the OTC gap, um, as opposed to someone who might not have any sort of hearing background. So I think over the years, um, it was kind of like, you know, when I started in telehealth pre-COVID, it was very like, ooh, taboo. And people have yeah. slowly seen, oh, there is an opportunity for yeah. telehealth to be used by a lot of people. Um, and our my, my mission and my value is all about affordability and accessibility. 
Um, and I think that's also really much, very much aligns with OTC with affordability and accessibility, not to take away, but to just offer another option for those who might not be going the prescriptive route otherwise. Yeah, yeah that's really, really, really interesting. And definitely, um, I like what you all have said about you know, it bringing attention to hearing health, because we definitely saw that um, tons of coverage on OTC, even if you don't really know what an OTC is, you know, you heard something about it. And I think attention on hearing health and that it's important to, to not wait to treat a hearing loss, that message is really getting out there. Um, and in part because of all the news on OTC. So that really helps us all. Um, for sure. I'm just going to recap a couple of things um, that you all said, and I think we'll have time for one more question. Um, just because it's such great information. So there's no one size fits all. No, no two hearing losses are the same. Um, and, and even if they are on paper, they might not present the same in those people's lives. There's no one um, solution for that fits all people. So you got to make sure that you know what situations you need help in and what kind of features you're looking for. Some OTC you're saying could be covered by insurance. So definitely start there first. Um, that's really interesting to me. Stick with major brands we are talking about. Um, make sure that it is a legitimate OTC self-fitting hearing aid that falls under the new FDA guidelines. Make sure it has a good generous return policy because you might need to return it. And also look for support plans. Um, that is a really important thing. It sounds like both of the all the products that you all are talking about have some really generous um, support plans. I don't think all OTCs are like that. Uh, these products kind of run the gamut. So it's good to, to check out um, those kind of things. All right, I think we have time for maybe one more quick question. And that is the lifespan of an OTC device. Is there anything you can say about that compared with a prescription device? Yeah, I can jump in. Sure. Um, so as far as the lifespan goes, a lot of it has to do with how well you take care of the device, similar to a prescriptive device. So mm -hmm. if you take good care of it, if you use a dry aid kit, you keep it moisture free, you clean it regularly, there's no reason why a OTC device, especially depending on the form factor, if it's a Rick uh, behind the ear style, there's no reason it shouldn't last you a good five plus years. Um, that being said, you want to look at the warranty that comes with the device. So I know like, for example, our devices, you can buy a three-year warranty package. Um, there might be options to extend the warranty. Does it come with a loss and damage coverage? I know ours do and several do, but not all of them do. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's no reason why a device, as long as you take care of it, shouldn't last a good long while, just like a prescriptive device. Because at the end of the day, if it's a receiver in the canal style, they're made up of the same components and the same parts as a prescriptive device. If it's something that's more in the ear, obviously you have to be a little bit more diligent with the cleaning of it, making sure that wax isn't blocking it, things like that. Um, but as long as you take care of it, it should last you many, many, many years. Great, Jessica. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I kind of think about hearing aids like, um, like cars. You know, if you take care of your car, it will last. If you don't, <laughs> it's not going to. And and ears are warm, moist, wet places. And you would never put your car uh, in, you know, <laughs> bathed in wax all the time. So it really is very good to be able to, to clean it and to take care of it. And then you should get um, a nice long life out of it. Um, I know we, on our website, we have videos to show you how to do that and help make it easy for you because... Um, a lot of people, they just don't even think about it or they don't know how to do it. And particularly with a lot of OTCs, there isn't, you know, we were talking about support before, right? Like if you don't know how to take care of it, then, then you're not going to get much life out of it. So, um, so we, we do have that where, um, to be able to help and make sure that you, you get a longer life out of the hearing aid. Great. And we are sharing, um, our staff is sharing in the, the chat and the Q and A, um, some of the resources that you all provided us. So thank you again. I think we're out of time for questions, but just wanted to thank everybody for a terrific discussion. Thank you panelists for sharing your time. Oh my gosh, I told you you're on my speed dial now for, for information <laughs> for HLAA. Um, thank you to our live captioner, Lisa Johnston. Thank you to all of our participants. Thank you for uh, joining us for HLAA OTC 101 Ask the Experts webinar. We hope that you'll share this information um, to get others' questions answered too. We have lots and lots of, of resources on our website. 
Um, remember, even if you're not a candidate for an OTC product, you may be able to help somebody make an informed decision who is. Uh, we are all hearing loss influencers. That's what we like to say here at HLAA. So take a look at our resources um, on our website and videos of past webinars, just like this one, and share this information. Thank you again for joining us. Um, we will see you next time. Stay in touch with HLAA and thank you for supporting Hearing Health. Thank you for having us. Great day, everybody. Thanks <laughs> Thank again. So it's been fun. Awesome. Yeah. We'll be in touch. Thank you, ladies. Thanks.